this next episode uh, it will just give you a taste about four minutes each of our five guests and I think that will whet your appetite to really come back and see the deeper dive uh, with with all five of them Every time Oh my goodness, what an honor it was to interview Bob in uh, 3M Mariucci Arena. <laughs> that was something else. He, uh, you know, uh, he, he stopped us right in the beginning as we started. We said, Bob, I'd like to hear about some of your experience coaching uh, and playing in junior hockey. He said, well, hold on, guys. We got to back up a little bit from there. And he told us his whole story. Yeah, that was us. I mean, that, I love the fact that Bob uh, cut open a little bit of a vein and talked about his growing up in Austin, Minnesota. You know, a lot of people, I'm sure, you know, go for fans and college hockey fans. You probably didn't know Bobby grew up in Austin, Minnesota. And, uh, it's, you know, Austin, Minnesota is known, known for Hormel for spam, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you know, probably the, the, one of the most successful college coaches and coaches in, 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 you know, college hockey and junior hockey history, Bob Monsko, I was born, raised there, and great, great interview. Bob is Bob is one of those types of guys that he cares about the game, about his players, about people. Um, he's just he's just a, a first class individual, and we were real honored to have him on. And on the eve of this showdown, men's coach, Coach Bob Motzko, he was awarded the National Coach of the Year. Coach is the second Minnesota coach ever in the honor's 73-year history and his second nomination. Well, we're here with uh, Bob Motzko. Bobby, just wanted to ask you this question. You know, what was your experience as a coach in, in junior hockey? Well, I, I got to back it up way before being a coach. Is, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I'm from Austin, Minnesota. You know, hockey's just getting going. I think the rink came in when I was in sixth or seventh grade. But the Austin Mavericks moved to town. And Lou Vero came to, I finished my high school, great high school uh, experience playing for the Austin Packers. But um, then I then I land with a guy called Jack Barzee, you know, one of the historic names of all time. And played for the Waterloo Blackhawks my first year out of high school and then moved to uh, our, our team franchise switch cities to Dubuque and I had this a tr tremendous experience and uh, so fortunate we were we were the Anderson Cup the Clark Cup national tournament with Dubuque and and what made lifelong friends which is most important and and uh, and the rest is kind of history then when I found myself in coaching you know I was so fortunate to you know to get on the coaching staff at St. Cloud State with Herb Brooks was there and it led to me get back into the USHL in in John, you were there back in those days, uh, and, and then that jump started my coaching career. You know, I was I was in the USHL at the same time you were. I was in Omaha. We were we were you know rivals and coaching together, and and it was such a great experience to interact. And you know, one of the things I always enjoyed is I was, I enjoyed you as a coach because you were one of the good guys. And, and junior hockey is growing leaps and bounds. Uh, you know, expansion of junior hockey might lead to right. more. What we were talking about is uh, um, getting great ownership and uh, understand that it's a developmental model for, for developing uh, more important U.S. hockey players. But yeah, there is an avenue at a smaller number for, for the international player. I never call Canadians international. <laughs> They're just north of the border. But we have a great model right now uh, in our country at, at so many levels. And we just need to continue to grow that for opportunities for young kids and coaches. And uh, I was a player that needed junior hockey. And then as a coach, I needed junior hockey. And so I was able to coach the old North Iowa Huskies, then once again, Sioux Falls Stampede. And that ignited my coaching career. So I owe a whole lot to, to junior hockey, the United States Hockey League more particular, because that's where I spent my time. And I sure wouldn't be sitting here today if I, if, if I wouldn't have ventured out sure. and, and got that experience. We we're, good, about we're, we're, we're good people in yeah, hockey, yeah, and, and yeah. that's one of the been one of the more rewarding things in, in my playing career, and more important, my coaching career over 35 years. The relationships we have amongst our group, uh, lifelong relationships, and, and that's what that's what we we take to the end of our career. Uh, 
Bob Nagley the yeah. third. What a joy and honor it was to talk with him. Um, just one of the most influential people, uh, along with his dad and and their team, in bringing the Minnesota Wild back to yeah. back to Minnesota. Yeah, Bobby is uh, has been a, been a lifelong friend. Uh, we were involved with when I was the executive director of the National Illinois Hockey Association. Bobby was on our board. Uh, he had a company called Border Patrol. Still, I I still think that uh, he sold it or whatever, but. It was a. It was one of these partitions, these foam partitions. You see them a lot of the rinks where they divide the rink up. But it was also they used it for for like a. You drop it down in a parking lot, throw a couple of nets, and you got a grassroots roller hockey game going on. So it was really a, an exciting aspect of our relationship, but also what we did as an organization, NIHA, as that grassroots hockey, you know, operation and having these teams all over the country in, you know, parks and recs and boys and girls clubs and city municipalities and stuff of that nature that, hey, all they needed was this portable board system, a couple of nets, throw down a hockey ball and you got a hockey game going on, which was really cool. And uh, we really enjoyed having Bobby come uh, and spend some time with us. Uh, it was really, really fun. To, to reconnect with them face to face, we actually hadn't. We've talked a, a number of times over, over the years, but face to face, I haven't seen, seen him in probably fifteen to eighteen years. So it was fun to see him, and of course, he's doing very well in Colorado, where he makes his home. And uh, you know, obviously, being involved with the uh, Sioux Falls Stampede in the USHL, him and Brian Schoenborn. So, yeah, a, a great interview, a great interview, and shared a, you know a lot of really cool insight. I thought one of the things he brought up, which was really cool, was about the billet families in junior hockey. And he was saying, you know, how important that was. This, as you would imagine, is a bittersweet Hockey Day Minnesota for the family of the man most credited for returning pro hockey to the state of hockey, which, by the way, was another brand Bob Nagley Jr. helped coin before his untimely passing from cancer. You know, there have been so many great contributors to the sport over the years in this state and i think if he's remembered as one of those great contributors i think that would be just fine for him i feel like i'm the most blessed fortunate person on the planet but he was my dad was able to get a meeting with gary bettman uh, and some other nhl executives in 1995 and i said hey this is after the north star mr bettman how do we get a team back in minnesota and can you can you give me a road map? And, you know, my, my father was, uh, we sold Rollerblade in 1995. Yep. And my dad and mom um, had relocated to Florida. And I, I was able to get a meeting with Mayor Coleman as, as this road map was kind of put together for him. Yeah. He said, you're going to need political support because we didn't have it when the North Stars left. You're going to need a great, uh, solid investor group. I can't say enough about uh, Norm Coleman's role without, you know, there, there was no one person that was responsible for the wild. It was, it was a team of people who came together to, you know, climb the mountain together and, and you know, yeah. it worked. Now we, just, now we just need a Stanley Cup in this state. There you go. Such an exciting time when you brought the Minnesota Wild uh, to Minnesota. I remember going to the very first game and the first puck drop, and it was just such a rallying point for really all of Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> there, there we go. It was opening night. <laughs> that was it. Wow. Yes. Everything kind of aligned for us. And, and of course, you know, St. Paul is a hockey town. It is. We, we actually loved that we were going to St. Paul and, and yeah. we were going back to where, and we were, you know, we're Minneapolis folks, but, right. but St. Paul has always kind of had the, the hockey DNA and the, the heritage that we, you know, we thought, well, there, there's, there's no better place to do it and, and and to go be kind of the only show in town on the on the east side of the river was was kind of a no-brainer junior hockey is very healthy these days guys and yep. and i'm i i just love being part of it i'm you know I, i've got other business interests i work on but but i love for me to be able to keep my finger on the pulse and and keep 
uh, an interest in the sport of hockey yeah. on a, you know, not just the passion level, but on the business side. Um, it's been, again, I'm, I'm, I've had kind of a dream life in this sport. The only dream I didn't get to accomplish was playing on the Olympic team and winning a gold <laughs> medal. There you go. <laughs> Well, you guys have had a huge impact on the game and, and certainly junior hockey, Bob. And So that's what I love. We're helping kids do what they love to do. And, you know, as someone who loves the game uh, like I do, I, you know, I, I look at the opportunities that hockey, that the sport of hockey has afforded me in my life. And, and more importantly, just the relationships. You know, yeah, exactly, Bob. No doubt. Don, you and I, you and I met through hockey. Uh, yeah, through roller hockey, but. <laughs> to work with Mark Lambert. Uh, obviously, Mark Lambert was one of the first coaches for the St. Paul Vulcans, um, you know, and he had some real success, not just as a coach, but as a player, played for the University of Minnesota and won a national championship. And so uh, it was fun to talk to Mark. He's really a, a gifted hockey guy, not only a player, but the personality in the game. Um, we were very fortunate to have uh, some time. We actually spent the time over at Tom Reed's uh, sports bar there in St. Paul, and I uh, had a chance to talk to Tom, and I said, "Hey guys, come on over anytime to do your hockey talk uh, show." And uh, but it was very, he was very gracious as well. But Mark uh, brought his scrapbook, and the th the cool thing was he brought that jacket. Yes, for me that was that was one of the highlights. Besides seeing my old coach uh, for after many many years, he brought his St. Paul Vulcans uh, Junior A hockey jacket, and uh, as you've seen in the video, I got a chance to wear it once, <laughs> but that was good enough for me. But yeah, I can't say enough about Mark uh, Lambert. Uh, as Sean was saying, uh, you know, grew up on, on the St. Paul. I went to Mechanic Arts High School, was one of the top players there. Mechanic Arts, you know, wasn't uh, really a perennial hockey power, but the years that Mark played, they really came a long way. And uh, and then Mark played uh, a little bit for the, the Bloomington Junior Stars. And um, as Sean mentioned, went on to the to the Gophers, her Brooks recruited him, won a national ch championship, um, and then came back to coach um, the Vulcans and uh, did well there. Uh, did some coaching then for University of St. Thomas as well uh, in years uh, afterwards. But uh, yeah, just a super guy and uh, just love love seeing him. Yeah, it was good to see uh, you know Mark and you know it's interesting the story that he had about. You know, he was coming out of high school, and Herb Brooks was the coach of the Bloomington Junior Stars at the time. And and I don't know if it was the Junior Stars, but it was it was the Bloomington Junior A team at the time. Herb was the coach, and he had recruited Mark to play at Bloomington. And then that summer, Herb took the job as the head coach of the University of Minnesota Gold Golfers. So obviously, Mark was there, and he played. But uh, it was kind of an interesting sidebar and story that Mark shared with us that, uh, you know, he was talking to Herb, and, and, you know, Herb was talking to him and saying, hey, you know, you play this junior hockey, it's probably going to be really helpful for you in moving on to your hockey career. He's doing a good job of moving this thing around on the power play. Most teams now, if you leave them alone and don't pressure them too much, they're going to come up with a real good scoring chance. So teams are, uh, particularly in the National League in Washington lately, are challenging you all over the place. And it's interesting to see uh, some of these teams uh, adopting some of that style, too. Cates gets the draw over to Hagelin. Ten seconds remaining. Schmidt tries to keep it in. Zimmer has it at the point. Four seconds left. The shot slowed down off the skate of Erickson. And that's it. The end of the first period. No score at the end of one at the Des Moines Ice Arena, and when we come back, Ed Cairo will have a sports update, so stay with us.
One of the things that, um, Mark, that uh, obviously all of us as players, we kind of come to an end. Obviously, you played for the Gophers and you played some, some, some professional hockey and then you got into coaching. Tell us a little bit about your first year coaching. My very first year of coaching was with the Bloomington Junior Stars in the Midwest Hockey League. Um, that was uh, new to me, but Herb um, always told me he thought I would make a good coach. So, and after four years of him drumming things into me, it kind of came natural to just go out there and act like I was Herb Brooks. <laughs> Uh, not only that, I, I went to his office and I told him, hey, Herb, Bloomington Junior Stars went ahead and hired me. He kind of knew that because he was my main reference. And I said, I could use those, you got any drills? I go, you always come up you always come up to the rink with all these papers in his binder. I go, you must have a lot of drills in there. I go, you think I could get some of those drills on paper so I could take a look at them and I use them with my team? And Herb, uh, Handed me his, uh, I still have it to this day, handed me his binder, his three ring binder was about that thick. There must be about 250 pages in there. Wow. His handwriting, and he said, take this down to Insti Prince the IDS building. He goes, drop it off. That's where we, the athletic department gets our printing done and you can take a copy of my coaching book. So to have that kind of referencing and to have that kind of backing my first year, kind of, I was, how do you say, getting a pass because people are going, hey, this guy played for Herb Brooks, you know? And then, uh, yeah, of course the pass even got a little bit better as he won the gold medal a couple years later. But uh, so I I, I, I kind of coached like Herb. I, I used a little a bit of my Doug Woog yeah. experience in there and a little bit of my high school coach, Don Broderick in there, but kind of a combo, but more like Herb as far as the drills go and the repetition and the ideas and uh, the things that you've got to drill in a young hockey player's head that they have to do instinctively in certain spots on the wings and stuff. That all came from her. That first year went by. The St. Paul Vulcans, uh, I think at one time I heard them referred to as the JV team for the University of Minnesota to an extent, um, where a lot of those players like yourself went on to play with uh, the Golden Gophers. Off that 74 team, we were just talking about four of us wound up. Four of the Balkan kids, junior players, were four of the six that Herbie recruited for the 75 class. It was myself and Holmgren, who played on a line together, Paul. And then it was Ken Yackel Jr. who played for us. And another guy, Joe Baker, is another one of these fellas that was on that Balkan team that was like, like a Boo or like a, like a Hanson or like a Craig Hammer. He could really handle himself 6'2", 220. Joel <laughs> and Holmgren was on that ball. Yeah, team. They they go, go, yeah. Christensen, Doug was uh, the deputy commissioner of the USHL. He's actually now the commissioner of Hockey East, which is uh, which is a big deal for him. Good, congratulations, Doug. A good fit for him, I think. And uh, he's a great guy, and he was, he was very gracious to spend some time with us and gave us some really good insight on what's going on with junior A hockey, not just in the USHL but worldwide. And one of the things I really liked about Doug and what he talked about is the importance of education for these uh, junior hockey players, not only while they're uh, playing junior hockey, but it just advances their uh, endeavors in, in college. You know, and there was one point uh, where he talked about, hey, this is a win-win for everyone, for the players, for the coaches, for the scouts, even for grandma who wants to make sure that grandkid makes it th through yep. college. Um, so you can do that with the USHL uh, where you can't necessarily do that with some of the major junior uh, where they're not eligible for the NCAA. Yeah, it was a good year. I mean, I think that there's a lot of things that we look back at uh, that we're really proud of. I mean, I love the fact that our team took care of each other from a health point of view. 
I love the fact that our team was playing its best hockey down the stretch. Um, I love the fact that we established uh, at the beginning of the year that Andy can be one of the top teams in the league. And so there's a lot of things that we can take from it. I also think that the one of the things that we've talked about a lot in our exit interviews has been uh, what lessons can we take from this year uh, as individuals and also as a team and as an organization. So we'll be better for it. You know, certainly a congratulatory comment of, of how well you guys have taken the USHL to whole new levels. And, you know, I mean, obviously not just college hockey, but the NHL has come on and said, hey, you know, we're drafting these USL, USHL players because we think they've got the quality of a play to play in the National Hockey League. So. Well, it's really taken off. I mean, it, it's from when I played, I played in the USHL in the late 90s. And from where it is, from where it was then, where, yeah, there was a few guys who would get drafted, but you knew them by name. You knew the players who were going to get drafted. And you're like, oh, these five, seven, 10 guys, whatever it was. Now, I mean, last year we had 57 players, which led all leagues in the world. Um, and that's just a phenomenal statistic, but it's been year upon year upon year. And some of it has been deliberate in terms of strategies that were, you know, uh, taken really between 14 and 18 to 14 and 20. And what we've seen is that, you know, collection of players work their way through the process, originally starting with youth hockey and then coming into junior hockey and then to college and now into pro. But we're seeing the dividends of the success uh, uh, that we've had at the youth level. So the American development model has proven more, more players have been able to play. We've been able to attract more players. Those players have come through our league to obviously do well. And, and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If players go to the NHL, and help their team, uh, more players wind up getting drafted and getting opportunities in the future. But what really resonates with people is to be able to sit there and say, listen, you can be a first round NHL draft pick and you never have to deviate from an academic uh, pathway. In fact, these are the reasons why it can help you from a contractual point of view on your first NHL contract. Um, and that resonates with parents, that resonates with advisors, it resonates with grandma. Um, and, and at the end of the day, people want to be able to continue that path should, God forbid, I mean, I had a career ending injury. I started a period and I never played again. I knew uh, Rick Bennett, um, who you probably know because you were a union guy. Of course. Yeah. Rick, Ricky uh, was my captain in Florence and PD in the East Coast Hockey He was kind of coming down. He's kind of a player coach. And I got to know Rick and his family very well. And, and I was really happy for him to see him win a national tournament. You know, he's doing really well with the Ghost Pirates now. And uh, it's good to see that because he's a, he's a quality. He's a, he's a good man. He's a great coach. Um, you know, just on an anecdotal level, you know, he wins the national championship and he gets the microphone pushed in his face. Yeah. And you can say anything in that moment, right? right? And you have no idea if you're going to win, you're losing, and, and you just have so much emotion. And the first thing that he said was basically uh, talked about the foundation of union hockey and all the people who came before him. And I, I just, just in that moment, you know, for that to be his first thought, um, I think it was a testament to him. And I think that for all of us as alums, um, you know, we were proud for him and happy for him. And then obviously to hear that it was, um, it was special because we all truly care about the program. We all truly care about the school and, um, we were thrilled for him and we were all celebrating his victory. Uh, um, I can tell you there are a lot of union alums around the world who probably woke up the next morning a little bit, uh, slower the next day after, uh, union won the national championship. <laughs> That's great. Was Sean Podine, who we interviewed. Sean uh, spent, uh, you know, he grew up in Rochester, Minnesota. Played for John Marshall High School, and then, you know, went uh, went to the USIU program where, where Brad Buto was a coach. But then, the coach the program folded. Played junior hockey for for Frank Saratori at uh, Rochester, and then, you know, went on to UMD and uh, had a good career there. And then was drafted by the NHL, and then, of course had a very illustrious career and ended up going to the Stanley Cup and winning it with the Colorado Avalanche. And it was fun to talk to Sean because I haven't, I haven't talked to Sean in a few years, but it was just good to hear his perspective on how junior A hockey, how it helped him to achieve his goals. So it's pretty cool. 
Yeah, yeah, love the interview with Sean. And uh, just a shout out to Sean um, as far as being a coach here uh, where we're at, at St. Louis Park Rec Center. Yeah. So he did coach uh, for a little bit the high school team. Uh, my boys were on the team. They were goalies at that time. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just to see his commitment to – to helping the younger players come up. And then the, the thing that he said, uh, which is really impactful, was uh, hockey is life. It really teaches you about uh, what the important things are in life, and it really sorts out a person's character. Yeah, absolutely. Matter of fact, uh, Paul and I were talking, Sean, and we'll cut you in a deal uh, for using that tagline, hockey is life. We start throwing T-shirts out and selling millions of them. <laughs> so thanks for that, that good tip. the other way. He's checked by Samuelson. The play was offside, but it's not whistled down. Flyers get the puck. Pass ahead. Pony in it on goal. Knocked down. Johnny Scott. There's Sean Pony with a spectacular goal. 3-0 Philadelphia. My goodness, how did he do that? That is unbelievable. And the fans love it. A 3-0 lead. The acrobatics of Sean Pony putting it in while on the seat of his pants. It was a race for the puck. Storr lost it. And Podine, his 11th goal of the year. And a great pass. Watch Podine and Storr come out, take him out of the play. And while falling... Good to see you, Sean. Great seeing you, Jonesy. This is awesome, guys. The honor of sporting the old Bulldog hat. The old oh. uh, UMD Bulldogs. <laughs> don't, don't think I didn't notice that right away, Jonesy. <laughs> Oh. Well, Sean, so nice to meet you. Um, and uh, I, I think I met you one time before when you were um, doing some coaching with the St. Louis Park uh, High School. And my boys were on the team. I had two goalies, Benny and William. This was back in, I think, oh, 20, 2015, 2016, something like that. Yes. But I've got the St. Louis Park ho coffee mug <laughs> representing. <laughs> I love it. How are the boys doing? They're doing good. My, my path was definitely much different than most. Um, in junior hockey, without it, I would have never got to do what I got to experience after that. Um, I was in high school, and I still remember my senior year, I wanted to play for the Mustangs. And they didn't, back then, this is the middle 80s, they didn't allow high school players to play in the USHL. And I wasn't ready anyway. I wasn't that good. So um, I, I finished my senior year at high school. And then I got a, uh, I had two offers out of high school um, for college um, scholarships. One was Alaska Fairbanks oh and, one was, and one was United States International University, the Soaring Seagulls in San Diego, <laughs> California. I know every kid's dream, right? <laughs> but I... I mean, the coach there was unbelievable. Brad Buteau, I still stay in touch with him this, to this day. Um, and I, I went out and I took it. I had a little pressure to take it. I never really wanted to go out there. You know, my dream was to be a bulldog. And it's funny when I, when I tell this story, like growing up in Rochester, we had three television stations, right? So we didn't get any NHL games, only the Sunday uh, afternoon, Peter Puck games uh, with the Flyers usually. <laughs> and um, I just remember, and there were fewer schools. And I always thought it would just be cool. I was more of a, you know, introverted kind of kid, more small school orientated. And I always wanted to go to Duluth and, you know, take on the big schools and play in the WCHA, which was, you know, in my world, everything. And um, so I went out for one quarter to San Diego and I just, I always knew at that age, if I didn't give it a chance, that I would always regret it. And I loved it out there. Coach Buteau was unbelievable. We had Mark Kaufman as our assistant. Mm. It, was it was beautiful. So I, I actually, and that was one of the hard, honestly, in my 55 years, uh, telling Coach Buteau that I wanted to go back to chase my dream was very, very hard. Hockey has been a, a, a way of, of bringing that all together. And of course, you've, You've reached the ultimate goal of the Stanley Cup winner, but uh, we've all had our share, fair share of uh, experiences in this game that really keeps us going and uh, and some great memories. Yeah, I think you nailed it on the head there, Jonesy. Like, um, successes are great, but the people that we've been able to meet along the way and just 
there, I, I still say, I still think hockey is the greatest sport in the world, but I think the people in hockey are just the greatest because you're, you're, you're together, you, you know, you, you've coached, you know, you're in that locker room, everyone's got to be on board, you know, who doesn't fit in, who does, who's, but who's willing to commit and sacrifice, who is not. And it's, it's just a great character test for life, I believe. You know, the one thing I wish I could, you know, get through to these young kids is that it goes fast, right? It goes so fast and the lessons, and I, I just know hockey, but the less life lessons that are learned in hockey, I mean, the challenges, the successes, the hard times, what you have to fight through, how, mu how much this game prepares you for life. Yeah. And it's it's amazing for me, from, I mean, again, only speaking for myself, the, the opportunities it's given me for traveling the world and the opportunities for the people I've met and just the opportunities to get that feeling when you go into a rink and get on the ice with your buddies. They're, they're irreplaceable.